Welcome Ju Chung to the show who's working on what could be the spell check for designers using a custom TensorFlow.js model. First though, tell us more about your background. Hello Jason, thank you for having me today. And my name is Ju Hyung and I'm a product designer and I'm currently working at NeighborNow which is the video and live stream platform in South Korea. And I'm very yes. excited to have this opportunity to share one of my best projects to all of TensorFlow.js fans today. And I hope my interview will inspire someone, someone else, just as I was inspired by this show and started my project. That's awesome to hear. Thank you so much. Now, I mentioned a visual spell check for designers. So what exactly is it you've created and what are your goals for the project? Uh, thanks for the question. And I started this project last year and I created the AI plugin for Figma and Jeffrey using TensorFlow.js. And in long term, as you mentioned, I aim to make the spell check for designer. And I prepared my screen and so let's get started to share my screen and have some demo. Sounds good. Yeah, I'd love to see a demo. Let's see that in action. In this example, we have two, three checkpoints on screen number one, as you can see. One, two, three. And as we move on to the next screen, we'll see we will see the screen number two has a two more checkpoints, three and four. So if we look into the, those two new checkpoints, we can recognize that they are detected instances, which means that they are probably misdesigned. So that is the designer's spell check, and that is the Figma ML that I can make using the TensorFlow.js. Basically, this yeah. Basically, this is a plugin for Figma and Jaffin, and which can recognize key elements of user interface by using the object detection API of TensorFlow, and then compare those detected objects objects to the design system library from Figma, and to ensure they meet the style guide of the company. So, what inspired you to make this project then? Yeah, uh, the user problem of this, this project just the stem from my design system experience. So design system is a complete set of standards that are intended to manage the design at scale using reusable UI components and UX patterns. So I'm sure that most of the subscribers who watch this live stream might be familiar with many design systems, for example, Google Material Design. <laughs> so these days, Design system is extremely common when it comes to create a new user interface for large scale products and service to ensure their consistency and productivity. However, it still has major obstacles. One of which is increasing complexity with the increasing number of components and patterns that included in the same library and same design system. And the another important thing is that it's super difficult to replace UI components one by one in the regular design file. So because of those kind of the complexity, even if designers shape the same screens just like this, uh, this one used the library exactly, but another one has legacy or detached instance. And some of them even has just emoji or unicode or whatever something I had the design of the use. So it's true story. So they look similar, but at the same time, they are completely different in the design system point of view. So when I work in design system teams, we work super hard to prevent this kind of the human mistake. For example, we updated design guides and see it frequently. We did design QA very often. So, and we even published the cartoon manual, Japanese style cartoon manual to make my designers easy to understand what is the design system or what is kind of thing that they should use. But we all know that the human resources were always limited. So we think differently. We should think differently. That is mm -hmm. the point that I started thinking about how to solve this problem by using TensorFlow. And that is the point that I'm met the TensorFlow day at the show and tell show and inspired some many kinds of things from that show. <laughs> so awesome. 
So because of uh, because we have been living with many services using cool technology, cool, for example, TensorFlow.js and face recognition and mask detection, or for example. So if we can integrate that technology into our design work, for example, a computer replaces a computer runs a number of the design elements instead of a human and spell check. Mm -hmm and autonomously recommend the design grammar to human if it finds something that does not conform to the guideline. I felt this will not only be convenient for a design system user, but also reduce the tons of burden on people like me who should man this system. So after I point out this idea, I started to make it with TensorFlow.js. Awesome. And I'm sure many of these design specs are quite complicated as well. So it's a good to have uh, some level of automation to help you check all of those requirements as a designer, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm curious, um, maybe like, you know, you mentioned using TensorFlow there behind the scenes to make this work. Can you give some more details on, on how that works? So there are a lot of challenges that I have to solve to make it work. <laughs> More, more, much rather UI data set and more optimized ML model. And finally, I have to find the best way to make my designers use this AI power seamlessly in their design process. So since last year, I have been serving this kind of problem one by one. So for data, I met a Singaporean-based startup called Mobin and they have over 50,000 high quality mobile screenshots for product designers. So I contacted them and presented my project just like this and got over 10,000 high quality UI screenshot data from there. Moreover, I received the free data library support from Korean startup called Select Star. We worked super hard together and annotated over 50,000 bounding box, UI, box, UI bounding boxes together. I'm super and sincerely appreciated the contributions of those two companies to this project. We're still in a good relationship. Excellent. And of course, you know, the, the, the quality of the end model is down to the good quality training data with all the annotations and bounding boxes labeled correctly, right? So this is very uh, worthy work to be doing at this point. <laughs> exactly. I'm super lucky to have this opportunity to work together or what to to companies. And after I prepared my data set, next step was I created, next was, step was creating the TensorFlow model. I set up the Google Chrome notebook just like this and uploaded the data set that I prepared. And next I downloaded some pre-trained object detection model from the TensorFlow hub and transfer running and fine tuning so that the model could detect the UI object. So I tested many different types of the model and after several experiments, I decided to uh, model and fine tuning method that should up for my project. In this example, I used the mobile net V2 and training step and fine tuning method is just right there. And, and I also, the result is just right there. Here is an example of music app. And as you can see, those the blue sky blue boxes I accurately highlighting UI objects right from the web browser immediately. tree. So all of my experiments were uploaded on GitHub. So if anyone who wants to see more details, please find this GitHub repository and be my guest. <laughs> Definitely. We'll put all the links in the description after the show for people to check out. And of course, if people have any questions, uh, feel free to leave those <laughs> in the comments as well. Uh, we always look forward to seeing what people think about these projects that are on the show. Um, now, you mentioned that um, you know you, you exp explored using uh, your current design system, um, but I guess this same principle could be applied to other design systems like Material Design or maybe some custom one that uh, another company might have. Um, so one could just retrain this with their own custom data to then be able to recognize those components and do something similar for, for those things that they care about, right? Mm -hmm. Amazing. So where do you see this in five years? And maybe if there's people watching who want to get involved, what areas do you need help with right now? I received a lot of user feedback after I released this 
prototype. And right now, I'm currently striving to improve detection accuracy. And and I'm also interested in adding the customizable feature for detect the user's design system. For example, right now this model is just focused on the design system that I made. But uh, if they wanted to customize this model to their design system, so I will provide some customizable feature for uh, that kind of thing that I prepared right now. Finally, I'm trying to upgrade this plugin so that we can lint our style and UX patterns beyond just the discovering UI. So that is the thing that I currently uh, have in mind to upgrade this plugin. And awesome. again, again, it's fully open source, and there are so much so much room for improvement. So I'm really looking forward to the TensorFlow JS for watching this live stream get involved in my project and get the hair on. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. That's a great answer. And I, yeah, I hope people do get involved. It's always great to see the community come together for projects like this. And of course, for those of you watching, let us know in the comments how you might use something like this in your industry. Often a project in one area can be reused in others too. So get your creative hats on. So yeah, thanks for sharing your work with us today and for being on the show. Thank you for having me today and thank you for giving me an opportunity to share my project and very unforgettable memory for me. So thank you.